Okay, Proverbs chapter 1. Now, this is the Haver family Bible study. This is where we as a family have gone all the way back to 2011. We have taken Genesis to Revelation, every chapter, a night, but that has not been the total rule. Like, we took a few nights to do Psalms 119. Some chapters require one, two, or three nights. Proverbs is a detailed book. It's a wonderful, great book. It fits for the church age, yet it's an Old Testament book. It's written by Solomon, who has God's wisdom and knowledge. So, we're not going to do all chapter one today. I already know that. We're going to do it in two parts, so we're not going to be in a rush because one verse may have much great detail. <laughs> and then we may read for five or six verses, and I don't think Proverbs should be passed up as, okay, we finished. I am involved in studying my Bible much. I am making my own notes of the Bible. I'm going several different times but again i'm doing it i'm going i'm reading genesis uh, five chapters in genesis and i'm doing three chapters in new testament but there are some people who will read a daily proverb according to the date today is the 26th they would read proverbs 26. tomorrow is the 27th they would read proverbs 27 and that is perfectly proper i've done that for a while I should get back to it, but I'm involved in other reading and studying of the Bible. So, to read through your Bible at least once, twice a year, and a daily proverb would be healthy for the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Now, there's some things in Proverbs we cannot apply to the Christian. And I hope that within this study we'll point it out, but Proverbs chapter 1 the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Okay, that's right off the bat who we know it is. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Verses 2 through 6 gives us the description why they're the Proverbs. To know wisdom. Now, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge is what you know, and you'll probably say this a lot. I know how to start a car. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. I know how to start a car. I start the car. And I drive the car. Understanding is your relationship to God in the Bible. I know how to start a car, I know how to drive a car, I get in it, I start it, and I go for a drive. Relationship to God, I'll pick somebody up and bring them to church. I'll pick up somebody and bring them to Bible study. I will go to the to our public street ministry. I will go to a public ministry. I will do something with the car for God. I got all kinds of bumper stickers on my car. That's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So to know wisdom, know knowledge, wisdom, how to apply what you know. And instruction, instruction is telling you how. Instruction, plain and simple, as I look at my notes as we come here. Instruction, plain and simple is, I'm looking, sit down, shut up and listen. You can't say shut up. Sit down, shut up, and listen. When you're watching these videos or you're listening to a preacher, sit down, shut up, and listen. That's instruction. To perceive, that's to see as it is. Not what you think, not what you like. Perceive the words of understanding. Again, understanding is a relationship to God. 
Well, that's not. We're talking Bibles. We're talking Christian life. We're talking living right for God. I ain't talking about the world. I ain't talking about a college education. I ain't talking about a high school education. I'm talking about our lives to Christ and God the Father and other Christians. To receive the instruction, again, instruction is sit down, shut up, and listen, of wisdom. So wisdom has to be instructed. It don't come natural. Justice. Justice is... Where's that note? That note's all over my Justice is dualism between right and wrong. Dualism. Is it a red light or is it a green light? The yellow light. Do I slow down or do I have time to speed up? Are you innocent or are you guilty? That's justice. Justice plays no prejudice. It spells it out. It's right or it's wrong. There's no justice today in the world. You want me to say America. No, there's no justice in the world. Right is wrong and wrong is right. We did that with evil. Study. And judgment. We know who that is. And many people don't believe there's a judgment coming, but there's the judgment of God. There's also a judgment active in our lives. If you don't settle to what is right and what is wrong, you go down the highway, you're driving the wrong side, which people do. You go down the southbound and northbound lane, the judgment is going to be, you're going to get in a head-on accident. Inequity. Equity is fairness and balance. Regardless of sex, age, creed, religion, or whatever you be. To give subtlety to the simple. And that, and simple, you know, you know, they're, they're dumb. No, they're simple in the Bible is they're not dumb. They're just ignorant. Paul writes that would not have you to be ignorant. I want you to know something. We'll see that, Lord willing, another night. To the young men, man, excuse me. And this is who Solomon writes is the young man, specifically his son. We will assume Rehoboam and maybe his other children. The guy had a thousand wives. But this is written for his children. And man, he didn't say son, man. This is written for others to say, hey, this is what you're supposed to teach your children. Every father is supposed to train up their, their, his children. Every husband is supposed to train up their wife. The Bible says if a woman has a question, she's to ask her husband at home. It ain't the church to grow your family. I know they make it say, be in church, be in church, be in church. Church. All right, let's count Sunday school, which a lot of people don't go. All right, let's say an hour, which is not an hour. Sunday morning, sir, let's say an hour, but... Well, it's not really an hour, but I'll give it an hour. Sunday night, not everybody goes Sunday night, but I'll give it an hour. Those, not an hour. And then midweek service, which many don't go, I say an hour, but it's not really an hour. You're going to give your whole family four hours of maybe Bible study, and that's not even four hours. Because don't forget, okay, Sunday school, like everybody get that's about 45 minutes. All right, the Sunday service, well, you got the collection, you got the singing, you got the, you know, this is what we're going to do this week, this is what we're going to do next week, and we got to greet everybody. And then, you know, Sunday night, we got to do the announcements, we got to do the choir, we got to do the singing, and then Wednesday night, we got to do the singing, we got to do the choir, we got to, you know, you know, give out bozo buttons and stuff like that, and thank this one person for showing up that hasn't showed up in 12 years. And you wonder why the church family, the Christian family, is, is Dalek of knowing God because the man has not taken charge of his family. Solomon has a 
thousand wives and he's taking charge of his family. And he's going to write later on, Lord willing, he's going to write to David. David himself and his mother Bathsheba took time. And the Lord willing, hopefully we'll get to that. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully the Lord will come for us before then. Knowledge and discretion. Now discretion is advisement. It's pretty much common sense. Do I do it or not do it? Should I get maybe a few more people to, to give me advice on what I, I plan on doing? It's not jumping right into something. A wise man. A couple examples. A wise man will hear. So when you tell someone about Jesus Christ, you tell him about who God is of the Bible. You tell him something about the Bible. And he doesn't listen. He's a fool. I have a Friday Bible study. I got two wise people to sit there and listen. There are people who go to church, <clears throat> sit in the church, and they're not listening and they're not wise. And they're there for whatever reason. Don't think everybody that goes to church is saved. And don't think that everybody that goes to church, they're Christian and living a wonderful, great life. You've been deceived. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved on the God of workmen that needs to be changed. Write the divine the word of truth. you got to study, not just read. You got to learn more. You got to grow from, from the new birth all the way to the age. You got to grow. And that takes growth. That takes time. That takes feeding. The bread, the honey, the water, the light. And a man of understanding, relationship to God, shall attain to wise counsel. It's plain and simple. And I gotta get my, my computer just came undone. Something. No, hold on. No, we got no. We got my computer is turning on. So if I don't use my computer at a certain amount of time, okay. I don't use my computer a certain amount of time, it's going to go off. i got to fix that later. All right, I apologize for that. I worked on my computer yesterday, and so it's not me. Okay, so. Uh, you're looking at your computer, your screen's like, like, oh, sorry about that. So, I totally lost where I was. To, under, uh, to abstain to wise counsel, majority... Many of the men, well, let me say men of the pulpits, whatever, regardless of religion, has no counsel at all. More sure of a woman's behind the pulpit because she truly has not read the Word of God. There are people behind the pulpit with their counsel is everything against the Word of God, and probably not using the Word of God, a modern Bible. So, to understand a proverb, that's what we're reading right now, that's what we're studying. It's a short sentence, often repeating, expressing a well-known truth. Jesus spoke parable. This is a proverb for learning. And the interpretation. And Joseph said, does not the interpretation belong to God? How do you get that? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The devil's without understanding. The devil has wisdom and knowledge. But he has no relationship to God. Remember, that's how you remember that. Solomon. I forget what it, when you go back to the story. Where he asks God, I mean, where God gives him that blank check, anything you want. 
And he's like, well, listen, I'm just a young child. I want to learn how to govern these people, Lord. Of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, one of them Solomon, uh, Solomon lacks. I forget which one it is. To understand the proverb, the interpretation, the words of the wise, that's Solomon. David was wise. Jesus was wise. You know, the nation of Israel, you know how many people did not understand what Jesus said? And he said, listen, I speak parables unto them, so they wouldn't hear. Because they were not going to believe him. And the Jehovah Witnesses will come up to you, that, that rich young ruler. Well, if Jesus God, why did Jesus say, thou shalt not call me good, only God is good? Because that guy didn't believe in Jesus, and that guy didn't believe in God. So Jesus answered him according to his folly. And you took the bait. A dark thing. The fear of the Lord, you fear Lord, is the beginning of knowledge. All right, I'm going to say it worldwide. Worldwide. People are full. They have no knowledge. Many people fear coronavirus, COVID-19, more than they fear God. I was in today where you get your blood work done, and a woman come up to me, you're not wearing that mask completely. No, she didn't say, you know, you're not carrying a Bible. You're not hearing those gospels, even though I did. Uh, you're not hearing those gospel tracks you got in your pocket. No, she didn't say that. You're not wearing your mask. I, mean, I ain't afraid of no COVID-19. And then you're wearing a mask, so. Look, you got to be nice. I'm not. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The knowledge of what? God. We ought not to be preaching about hell. You get the fear of hell in you and you're going to be like, oh, what are you going to want to know? How to get out? What's the expression? The, the Philippian Jewish, what must I do to be saved? Saved from what? Hell. That, that guy was preached to. You know it by his conduct to, to Paul and Silas. I need to be saved. Saved from what? You were asleep. <laughs> The guy needs to be saved from death because the jailhouse was broken. Thank God through the miracle of God, nobody left. I got saved because I did not, I feared hell. That's why I got saved. You, you didn't know about the second advent yet? I didn't know nothing. That man opened the Bible, showed me I was a sinner, opened the King James Bible, showed me about hell, told me I was going to hell, and I needed to be saved. You know what I did? I feared God and got saved. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So you want knowledge? It's not, it's not in the school. It's not online. But, okay, now one thing Proverbs does a lot of, Here's A. Here's B. Here's a chicken. That's a dog. There's a male. There's a female. It's black. It's, I shouldn't say that. It's white. It's green. It's a tree. That's what Proverbs, and most of the time, in one Bible verse, Proverbs will say this and then that. And that's why it's going to take so long to do Proverbs, rightfully. All right, so the fear of the Lord to begin with a knowledge. Boom, positive, negative. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, that's a mouthful. Now, my family has been out in the streets preaching the gospel. I'm going to say 2005, 6. 2005, 2006. My family and I. And we've, we've, we've done courthouses. We've done high schools. We've done downtowns. We've done the Daytona 500. We've done Bikers Week. 
We do the farmer's market. We've done a flea market. We've been everywhere. Parades and everything. We've done carnivals. We don't bring a carnival. We've, we've gone to carnival. We don't bring the carnival. We go to carnival. That's a big difference. Probably shut up. Yeah. All right. If I am dealing with somebody, whether I'm preaching or I'm the gospel track or I'm witnessing one at, in prison, and I show a man the knowledge of Jesus Christ on how to be saved, and he rejects it, the Bible says you're a fool. He despises. I know Christians. Many Christians I have tried to take under my belt and try to grow in the Lord and help them grow, and they despise it. You know what the Bible says you are? You're a Christian fool. And listen, when I go up to a Christian, and very rarely do I go, I go up with the Bible. If you're wrong with the Bible, I'm going to show you the Bible. I'm going to give the scripture. And if you reject it, the Bible says you're a fool. You reject the salvation. You don't fear God. And fools despise wisdom instruction. What's wisdom? To know God. To how to apply God in your life. And the instruction how to be saved or how to grow. Or how to Whatever you're doing. My son. Now that's Solomon right into probably Rehoboam. But if, if the Holy Spirit is an inspiration of scriptures, and he is, and the Holy Spirit is God, and he is, and the Holy Spirit wrote Proverbs through Solomon, and he did, why can't we say, my son, and apply that to us as Christians? Are we not been adopted? Are we not the sons of God through Jesus Christ? So when we read, every time we read my son, we can spiritually apply that verse, say, Hey, God, you're speaking to me. And yet, when you have read the Bible, and you have studied the Bible, and you look at Rehoboam, you're going to look at sometimes where Solomon wrote, My son, you're going to be like, Solomon, he wasn't listening. And then we got to look at our own Christian life with God and say, Christian, styly, yeah, you're not listening. Now, Proverbs is to make like Simitu a comparison. My son, hear the instructions of thy father. That's sad because a lot of kids today don't have a father and have no idea who their father is. That's hard. Forsake the... Forsake not the law of thy mother. But we're not under law, we're under grace. Do the addition. Make your bed. Brush your teeth. Be home by nine. Get your homework done. Get out there and mow the lawn like your father said. That's the law of the mother. Instruction of the father. This is how you start the lawn. This is how you paint. This is how you take the garbage out. This is how you do your math. That's your parents. Boys, that verse thrown out today. So many parents are relieved right now of COVID-19. Oh, the kids are going back to school. You know what your schools have taught your children? You ought to be throw the schools out there without God, without the Bible, without Jesus, without hope. For they, the instruction and the law, shall be an ornament of grace. That's an ornament. What your parents, what your godly parents teach you is to be an ornament of grace. Now, can't you already see what's wrong with Christmas ornaments? That's the first time ornament shows up in the Bible and it's reference to grace. Not the Christmas tree of Jeremiah chapter 10 that I have been in churches where it's been eluded. That's not a Christmas tree and it completely just passed over while they got a Christmas tree on the pulpit or the piano. 
That's the first time that word ornament shows up, and you got it referencing to holidays, and, and it shows up with grace, what your parents teach you. You know what the parents are teaching the kids today? It's a broken ornament. The cat's been batting around the house. I know we were you know, dying with my wife. We had we had you know the Christmas tree. In the middle of the night, we hear the the ornament being slapped around the house and find it broken in the morning. That's today's parenting. Not what Psalm is talking about. Grace unto thy head. Not some sense into you, head. And chains a necklace about thy neck, and it ain't just a necklace. Listen, a necklace back then was a symbol of authority. Daniel got a golden necklace because he was put in authority. That wasn't you going down to any store in 1495 and you can pick up any necklace. It was a value. And it was gold. Gold. Not, you know, part gold and part garbage you get today. All right, verse 10 through 19. My son. Solomon is speaking to his children, his Rehoboam. And Rehoboam completely blows this almost. And I mean, he didn't murder anybody, but he went with the wrong crowd. Instead of the age people who had common sense, he went to the people that he grew up in high school. With. And you don't even know what I'm saying. Or you even read your Bible. My son is sinners and tasty. Entice is to excite, to tempt, to incline for you, and usually to do wrong. Entice. The word entice itself is not good. Consent thou not. Don't do it. It's a free will. They force me to do it. Peer pressure. Not what the Bible says. They made me do it. No. Nope. Bible says consent. No. First uh, John chapter 2. Sin not. But we do sin. <laughs> we have an advocate. Funny how Bible sets the tone and sets the answer to what the world teaches. There are going to be people who are going to come. They're going to try to get you to do wrong. The Bible says consent. Thou not free will. Oh, uh, then you're guilty. If they say, "Come, let us lay us, let, come, let us lay," <coughs> excuse me, wait for blood. Let's murder. Now, that's not be a bone, but let us. Lurk. The only other place that word shows up is in verse 18. Two places that shows up in the Bible. Let's lurk privily for the innocent without cause. You know, that's going on in America today. Portland, Chicago. These rioters are out there looking to kill people. All for BML. All for their cause. All to defund the police because they're criminal. If you weren't criminal, why would you want the police? I don't want the police to fund it. I don't worry about the police. And I've had problems with the police as a street preacher. And usually works out to the good. When you're good to the police and you got the cause and you're not guilty. Now there are some Christians who are, who are, not, who are not guilty. They've done the cause and they still... You know, put in jail and they still died, but that's suffering, what the Bible speaks about. It is wrong for someone to go up to someone and say, let's go kill somebody. And it's wrong for you to say, okay, let's go do it. There's a whole bunch of people in America today, August 26, 2020, it's been, I forget how many days, they are wrong. They're going to stand guilty before God, whatever they believe. The Bible says you're wrong. And those riots and all those events started with one form. Hey, come on. Let's go cause them trouble. All right, let's go. Hey, come on. Let's go break into some buildings. 
Hey, look, there's a riot. Let's go, let's go break in this store. Someone enticed someone else. That, that's how pretty much, I mean, there's some people that did it on their own. There's been people who've been provoked. But one of, I don't know how many root causes there are to those criminal be besieged. One of them, somebody, hey, come on, let's go get in trouble. Come on, you want to smoke this there, right? Come on. Come on, you want to do these drugs. Come on, you want to. And the Bible says consent not. It's not peer pressure. Bible says no. But the man got his wisdom from God. No. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. That's death. Let's go kill them. And there are people and gangs and organizations throughout the entire world. One of their objectives is we got to slay blood. We got to kill somebody. Some of their initiations into their clubs is you got to kill somebody. Whatever their outfit is, some of them are. In order to get part of this club, you got you know you got to rape somebody. You got to kill them. You got to steal so many cut. No. Don't raise your fist to be no. Kiss our feet. No. Bow down to Mary. No. Come join our carnival. Nah, 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 nah. No. You tell me where there's a carnival. We'll stand outside the carnival and we'll pass out gospel tracts and we'll preach as they go in and out of the carnival. We don't go to the carnival. We go on the outsides of it. We will find all precious substance. We're going to rob from you. We're going to steal from you. We're going to take your belongings. Most likely, in many cases, when you have two people break into a house, two people break into the store, and they're both carrying some kind of weapon, and their intention is to steal something, and their intention is to kill somebody if they have to, it's right here in Proverbs chapter 1. What's the answer to either party? No. Even the guy out there in the car waiting to drive the car off for them. No. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Man, it ain't just a purse. They ain't talking about fill their house. That's a lot of stuff. Cast in thy lot among us. Now that's not the lot in the Bible, you know, let's draw a straw. Come on, join us. Th think about this as a car parking lot, all right? You, you got a couple bad cars in the park. Come on over here and park over here with us. <laughs> come on, come park in this lot, this lot of badness and terribleness. Let us all have one purse, unity, Andy up. Let's all get the religions together. Let's all get the world under happiness and have a have a cola and say, oh, the world. And... No! That's what the churches are doing out the world. They're coming in unity with the enticement. I don't know how to say, all are welcome in our church. What was that nonsense? That's what we're talking about right now. Well, say, Stalin, they're not out to kill somebody. If, if that church doesn't teach about the salvation of Jesus Christ alone, and you need to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and not go to hell, they don't teach that. They're, they're bringing blood as Ezekiel. Think about it like that. You got some kind of organization. We're just so happy and good luck. He's a wonderful, great guy. Just loves it. <laughs> And then they die under your authority and go to hell. Blood in the fingertips. Somebody had to sit down one time. Oh, we'll have a Jehovah Witness and deny God. We'll have to have the Mormons. and We'll have to have a Catholic Church. We'll have to. 
mess up the Baptist church. We'll have to have a Pentecostal church. We'll have to have this organization. We'll have to have a big, big guy with a big belly button and, and have another guy as he see angels. And this one have to see, oh, I see Mary in a toast and all that other nonsense, which drives you away from God. And you drive them away from God and they die without Jesus Christ. The blood is on your fingertips. You killed them. That's the perspective. It doesn't have to be done with a gun or sword. It can be done with religion. And it can be done with a King James Bible. There are people in a, in a religious setting with a King James Bible. There are people who think they're right and they're going to go to hell when they die. And the people in the authority of that religious organization have got blood on their fingers. I want them. They read properly. Oh, they, properly. They went bang, 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 bang. Oh, can't say. Oh, you can't go against gun rights. I'm sorry. Um, I don't. Know. That's what it's talking about. Andy up. My son. Okay, God speaking. Walk not thou in the way of, with them. Separation. That's that mean, mean, nasty, dirty word. Separation. Have no concile with them. You want to do evil? Fine. They're going to pick on you. They're going to say, you, I'm right now, and there's something right now I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do, and I know I'm, I ain't going to do it. And if I do get assassinated, well, from the place I get it from, and but no, refrain thy foot from their path. Get out of their walkway. No fellowship with them. No. Well, we got teen pregnancy. If they said no, but the school systems and, and the educators and, and the government said, well, if you have an accident, we'll, we'll take you down to this facility. We'll remove your accident. No. For their feet, get your foot out of the way because their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. That's death. You know, there are people uh, who are in jail today for murder. And they're in there for murder because their best friend, somebody they knew, got them in there for their crime. And how'd you not have to go to jail? Say, no! No is so hard to say when it comes to the flesh. Surely in vain emptiness. The net is spread in the sight of any bird. What on earth? What's, what did Solomon get crazy there for a minute? What he's talking about is Galatians 6, 7. These guys are set in a trap for themselves. They don't even see it. A bird. We had one time one of our one of our birds got out. We're chasing around with one of those uh, nets for fish. That bird's like, I know what you're doing. Bye. That bird saw the net coming. Uh-uh. He ain't getting me. He got away from man, 30 minutes or more. The idiot human beings. Well, I know there's a police. I know there's a judge. I know there's handcuffs. I know there's a jail. <laughs> they won't catch me. You don't believe it? I've been in a jail ministry. Oh, I don't know how many years I've been in jail ministry. Many. How many men I talked to, it wouldn't, it, it, it wouldn't happen. I didn't think it was going to happen to me. I had one guy in jail. Seriously, I mean, you think this is a joke or a tease. A guy walked out of the place that, that he was doing his crime. There was a cop right there. The cop was having a, a soldier talking to a couple people 
The guy walked out of the place and whatever it was like the guy what are you doing? And, uh, these criminals know there's a law. That's why they want to get rid of the law. They know there's a justice system. Well, not really that. Just. There are people in other countries. They know their government. If you get caught, they're going to take away a finger. There are countries, if you steal, they'll, they'll remove a finger. Uh, granted, you... Well, you may have, you may lose all ten fingers because you probably still can steal it once. I guarantee there are people out there that had two or three or four, maybe all ten fingers gone. You learned your lesson. What stopped you? Nothing. A stupid bird will see a net come by. I'm out here, and they lay wait for their own blood. Galatians six seven. Now, he'll, he'll say in Ecclesiastes, sentence against the work is not speedily uh, done, so I'm not quoting it completely. Listen, the law and the binding laws of America prove that a criminal can get away with anything. The law does not protect the innocent. It protects the criminal in America. Wait till you stand before God and you receive instruction, justice, and judgment and equity. Wait till you stand to the judge of the whole earth. Abraham says, or Abram. God knows what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. There was a, um, oh, who's I reading the other day? A son of a, a son of a, a important person. I forget what. I forget what the mention. They were saying that he went to this tribe in Africa, and they believe the guy was eaten by cannibals. God knows what happened. God knows what happened to all those ships and airplanes of the Bermuda Triangle. God knows every person what they're doing in the riots throughout the world right now. God knows all the blood that the Catholic Church has shed. And God has to send every soul into hell that you deceive them into believing they were saved and they were not saved. You're going to get your butt one day. Be better for a millstone be hanging about your neck. Well, that's for children. Yeah. I know, children. For they, for their own blood, they lurk. That's the second only place in the Bible. Probably for their own lives. So are the ways of every one. That's greedy, there's your problem, of gain. Which take away the life murder of the owners thereof. And we're going to stop right there.